Always verify the catheter kit and check the size before finalizing the site. Trialysis catheter kits look very similar, so be sure to confirm the correct length needed for your procedure before proceeding. Here is a list of all the included items and the separate components required. Components that need to be found separately are the two yellow port caps, sterile gloves, and ultrasound probe cover. Inside you'll find the following components. Prep gloves along with the surgical cap and mask, sterile gown, sterile drape with arrows indicating the direction towards the patient's head, a 15 centimeter trialysis catheter, an 11 French dilator, and a 13 French dilator, an 18 gauge needle for the procedure, a five milliliter lure lock syringe for sterile saline, and a syringe for the finder needle. There's tegaderm and sterile gauze, and beneath them you'll find the guide wire, needles for lidocaine, and a needle driver. After applying the sterile gown and gloves and prepping your patient with chloroprep and the sterile drape, here's how to prepare your catheter. Apply the two yellow caps to the ends of the red and blue ports. Take the provided sodium chloride labels and apply them to the three 10 milliliter syringes and take the 1% lidocaine label and apply it to the five milliliter syringe. Break the seal on a sterile saline vial while holding gauze and use the filter needle on the 10 ml syringes to aspirate sterile saline into all three. Repeat this process to aspirate lidocaine into the 5 ml syringe. Now take the two saline syringes and flush the ports on your line. After prepping your patient in a sterile fashion and anesthetizing the site, place your needle in the right IJ. After confirming that your needle tip is in the middle of the vessel and you have aspirated dark venous blood, disconnect the syringe taking care to anchor your hand on the patient's body to stabilize your needle and thread your guide wire to about 20 centimeters. The wire should move easily and not meet any resistance. Confirm correct placement of the guide wire under ultrasound in both transverse and longitudinal views. You can also consider confirmation with tubing manometry if available. After confirming the guide wire is in the vessel and it moves back and forth without resistance, you can remove the needle. After removing the needle, make a nick through the skin with your scalpel larger than what would be used for a central line. To prevent a skin bridge, ensure the scalpel's bevel is facing up, place the tip at the hole and make the incision in the direction of the guide wire. Once you make your nick, it is important to rotate your guide wire through the nick to ensure there's no skin bridge. Refer to this chart as a guide for insertion depths based on anatomical location and the catheter length being used. Take the smaller of your two dilators and advance the dilator over the guide wire. The dilator should enter the skin at the same angle as your guide wire. Advance the dilator and in a twisting motion, about half a centimeter using your first three fingers at the skin until resistance is felt. Once you meet resistance with the dilator, rack your guide wire to confirm that the wire is able to move freely in the dilator. If the wire can rack freely, continue to dilate and rack the wire in this manner until you have dilated to the vessel. If the wire cannot rack freely, do not advance the dilator as doing so can kink your guide wire or damage the vessel. Instead, pull back on the dilator until the guide wire racks freely, adjust your angle, and re-advance. Once you have dilated to the vessel, remove the dilator and apply direct pressure with gauze over the area. As a best practice, always keep a hand on the wire to maintain control and secure its placement. Next, take the larger dilator and again rack, dilate, and re-rack in the same manner as before. Remove the dilator and apply direct pressure with gauze to the insertion site as there will be significant bleeding in the area. Feed the trialysis catheter over the guide wire until the guide wire comes out from the proximal purple lumen. Advance the catheter through the insertion site into the vessel and advance to appropriate length based on your anatomical site. 
Once at the appropriate distance, remove the guide wire from the purple port. Take your sterile flush and aspirate all ports to confirm that you have venous flow. It's important to hold the syringe completely upright to limit the amount of blood that enters the syringe chamber, as well as preventing air embolism. Remember to protect the patient from air embolism by ensuring the ports are sealed with the built-in clamps. Once finished, suture your line and place a sterile dressing. Remember that catheters placed in the IJ or subclavian veins require x-ray confirmation of their placement before use.